I haven't done any videos on packing. I haven't done any videos on what I brought or what I think you should bring, how to see some place like the places that I see or go. I brought too much with me and I'm taking too much with me again to this town that I'm going to in Central Peru called Wanuko. It's not called Wanuko. If you call it that, they won't know what you're talking about. It's called Wanuko. So, there's no H. It has an H, it's silent. If you pronounce it, they won't know the name that you're talking about. If you accent the second or third syllables, they're not gonna understand what you're saying. Which is weird for me because if someone asks me, are you from Westminster? And I don't understand them, and then they say Westminster. I'm like, oh, Westminster. I didn't understand at all what you were saying because you said Westminster. We don't really do that in English too much. Apparently in Spanish, where you place the accent is a big deal to the point of making everything you say just completely unintelligible if you don't do it right. Sometimes they even say things back to me exactly as I feel like I said that to them. Then I say it back to them exactly how I heard it. And once again, they correct me and explain to me that they simply can't understand it the way that I'm saying it. A little bit of that extra chaos that I'm not used to experiencing. And there could be a lot of opportunity uh, in the unpredictability and in the chaos. I expect more of the same in the rest of Peru. I think the chaos will, will be reduced in Argentina and Chile, at least from what I'm told. Maybe increased in Ecuador and Bolivia. Probably decreased in Colombia too. I may be going to all those places. I might not. I don't know. I might buy a motorcycle. I might not. All I know is I'm getting on a... Oh. All I know is I'm going to the airport tomorrow. I don't know that I'm getting on a plane. Why? Because I'm flying on a Peruvian airline. They cannot fly in fog or maybe rain, which it rains every day, because they don't have the right equipment on their planes. Like, I don't know if it's radar or what it is. I actually booked my flight two days early. I have two more days at this Airbnb I'm staying at. Just in case my flight gets canceled two days in a row, I'll still have a place to stay. That's the kind of forward thinking you gots to do. I don't know how long I'm gonna be in South America, which brings me to my larger point, which is what am I doing here? And the answer is I don't really know. All I know is that I've been everywhere in the U.S. that I can think of and just doesn't feel great to be there right now. So I'm somewhere else. I don't know how long I'll be here. I don't know what it means, but I can tell you one thing is that when I look at this as a vacation or as an option, things get worse. When I resign myself to this being what my life is, when I resign myself to the uncertainty to the traveling, to the suitcases or the backpack. Different places, different people. When I allow myself to settle into this as a lifestyle, there's something in me that rises up and meets it, and meets the world around me. It doesn't matter if this is what I'm going to be doing for the next couple of years or not. It doesn't matter when I'm going back to the US what matters is that I accept where I'm at right now and actually embrace it and say, okay, let's see what's happening here. I've been sick a few times from the food, usually from the best restaurants. I've been to the best restaurants, the most expensive places have gotten me sick. Also a ice cream bar that apparently melted for a while and then was refrozen and served to me. Uh, that was my worst one. You know, you, you, you just, that's the one you don't see coming. Yeah, watch out for ice cream. The Chinese food last night, I thought was gonna kill me. I was sick before I even left the restaurant and I don't know if my body's just adapting or what, but I managed to suppress that bomb somehow and I, I came out okay. And after a couple hours of just like thinking that things were about to get really bad uh, and then they didn't, it was amazing. All right, yes, Cusco is 11,000 feet up. Yes, you do notice a difference. Yes, it is in a valley and everywhere you go is either uphill or downhill. A couple of the key points that I've noticed for you gringos out there, if you've got anything other than brown eyes, you have blue eyes. And uh, the ladies and the gentlemen like that. So, be wide-eyed. 
and you get some attention if that's what you want. Something else to think about. Shamanism is a big uh, industry here now. And they've got a restaurant called Shaman Vegan. It, it, the word doesn't really mean anything anymore down here. Do your research before engaging in your drug activity or plant medicine, whatever you like to call it. Um, they've got ceremonies for everything, including coca leaves. I don't know how that makes any sense, but they got it. Um, now the ayahuasca, the San Pedro, yeah, that stuff happens. You can find it. Find something you trust. Don't just pick something out of a phone book. So it's about that close. That's about how close it is. All right, we're supposed to be leaving for Wanuko right now. Um, but apparently a couple people were killed there yesterday in riots with the cops. The potato farmers doing their thing. Tried to reschedule, but uh, the office didn't open until 9 a.m. Of course, they were 15 minutes late, so by the time they told me I couldn't rebook my ticket, it was actually too late for me to make it to the airport to have my ticket. Now I'm being pushed around by people for some reason. No sense of personal space. So uh, now I'm at the airport trying to figure out if I can reschedule, which looks like it probably won't happen. I'll probably just lose 200 bucks or I don't know, whatever I spent. But this is the chaos. Uh, it didn't feel good. It just really needs to feel like it's a dangerous world. So we'll see how this all goes, see what opportunity might come out of this. The sun here is really bright. Uh, even if it's only 70 degrees, you burn really fast. The strike slash riot in Huanuco is seems to be starting to slow down, but it doesn't mean that it's over. I've got a ticket booked for two days from now, which was three days from when I was supposed to leave. When I went to the counter and basically said, you know, people are dying there, right? And you're gonna just drop me off at an airport that has no way to leave the airport because the roads are blocked. Sure you wanna do this? They're like, um, tell you what, why don't we put you on a different flight? I said, thanks, I appreciate that. So it didn't cost me anything. And the strange part is that that's the most important thing to me, is that it didn't cost me any money. So that'll give you a little insight into my own neuroses and what I value for some strange reason. A couple more days, um, staying in the same apartment. Look at the blue sky behind me, isn't that nice? It's one of those days. It looks like it's gonna, looks like it might get rainy pretty soon. Whew. The sun here is really bright. Thank you.